people are already here. <laughs> I've already been chatting a little bit with uh, with a few of you here on the side. So how's everybody? It's Saturday. It's sunny, but it's cold, and I'm trying to stay uh, warm. And uh, Annie, you're absolutely right. My high ceilings are not helping the situation at all. But here we are, and today we have an amazing news. I would like you to, if you intend to draw with me, go to uh, the bottom of this uh, video. There's a link for our muse, but our muse is also right here on the side, Jonathan. And I chose this muse because of the high contrast. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. And I also believe that we might be able to finish this within an hour, which would be a little bit amazing, uh, given how slowly I work, but that's how it is. Okay, so I see a lot of you are here, so many people, of course, from the US, but I have different continents represented, and it's, I don't know, it just warms my heart to know that we can do this, that it's 2020, and we have the technology to do something like this. It's really... It's really great. So guys, I decided, as you can see here, right underneath my hands, there's an iPad. I decided that today to change things up a little bit, I would draw on my iPad. This does not in any way make you go and get an iPad, but if you do have one, why don't you also uh, grab your iPad? I'll show you a little bit about the brushes that I personally um I lean towards, and the brush that I intend to use today uh, may not be an original brush, but it's one that is accessible uh, for you to buy. I'll make sure that you get the link at the end of this um, drawing session, so that if you do want to spend uh, $15 is what I spent for that huge pack of brushes, then um, that would be really worth it. Uh, the author of these brushes that I'm talking about is Georg. He's from Germany. And again, at the end, I'll make sure that you get the link because, wow, his brushes are just endlessly uh, just, you know, they open possibilities. It's amazing. So um, everybody grab what you want to draw with. I know some of you might choose to draw with a pen. Some of you might choose to draw with a pencil, which is great too. I am going to go with my Apple Pencil today. My little Apple Pencil, you know, the one that's got the little flat part so that it doesn't roll away, right? So I also have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you know, it's what I call the gargantuan one. <laughs> it's the big one. Uh, honestly, I wish it was even like a little larger than that because if it was that would give us even more real estate to draw big and that's really what I'm after so not complaining though I love this machine I've had it since November 2018 and I'm going to switch it on and as you you will see right, let me switch now to the view where you can see my iPad so I've got a, a profile of John Lennon that I did a while back and um, this is my my screensaver I'm going to open it, and as I open it, I'm also going to quickly, let me see, let me make sure that, hold on, I need to re-enter my password because now it's been unhappy. All right, so as you know, we have the luxury on these iPad Pros, the luxury of uh, splitting the screen, right? So when we split the screen, that really gives us the best thing on earth, which is to have our reference photo on the left. I'm right-handed, which means that I like looking left for the reference photo to then draw. Because if I had my reference photo uh, to the uh, right of my right hand, I don't think it would be as great. It wouldn't make as much sense. So being right-handed, I like having my reference photo uh, to the left. I prefer having a reference photo to the left of what I'm drawing than even in front. I have the feeling that my brain works better going this way than going, you know, that way. I don't know. It's just, mm, I don't know, but okay. Uh, that's how it works best for me. So 
how do we split the screen quickly, guys? Do you know how to do this? Let me show you. So if you, okay, let me unsplit the screen so then I can show you how to, how to split it, right? So I'm in my photo app, right? I've got the, the Muse saved. Now it's taking up the whole screen. Uh, but if you summon your dock here, so let me push this a little bit. See, I just summoned the dock at the bottom, right? I've got all the apps in my dock that I like using a lot, the ones that I tend to split the screen for. So whatever you want to split the screen with, make sure that that app is in the dock, okay? And of course, the app in question is going to be Procreate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Procreate and slowly what I'm doing. I am going to bring it to the side and as I release it, boom, it takes half the space of the screen. Now, whether you have a 12.9 or I believe it's a 9 point something, which is a 10 inch, really, this is more or less a 13 inch, um, it does the same thing. And you can also opt to do a 75-25, I guess, split. I like a 50-50 personally um, because it's better. I'm going to put a little bit more brightness and hopefully that will help. So this is a folder in uh, my Procreate app where I keep all my profiles. So I have a lot of profiles in there, obviously. Uh, some that I did a while back and others that are more recent. So what I'm gonna do is open uh, a new canvas. Are you guys ready? Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's quite, a, quite a few drawings in there, guys. And this is only in my profile uh, folder because if I leave my profile folder, I also have, my goodness, uh, cars. I also have just portraits. I have beards, uh, just portraits. I have online demos. I have pets. Um, things that I do for my school uh, is here. It's a little bit bright, so bear with me. I also have a folder that is dedicated only to when I draw eyes, so just a lot of eyes, and it's called Just Eyes. You see, that's what I called it. But today I'm going to go to the profile and uh, open this uh, folder, and now I'm going to go to the plus here, you see, and I'm going to choose a vertical canvas so so that it kind of fills uh, the one half of my screen. So go ahead and grab a vertical canvas or um, grab any sketchbook or any piece of paper that you can put your hands on today, okay? Um, keep in mind that if you want to follow this class that I have on Sketchy, um, Portraits in Procreate, this class is still available. You can grab any three of my classes and get 40% off. You know that's a deal that we have going on right now. If you look again underneath the video, um, you will see a link to access uh, this. And if I'm not mistaken, I can see this as well. And you all, all you have to do is use the code France40, France40. Um, and uh, that's that's how you're going to get 40% off any three classes. Okay, uh, Deborah, if you don't mind, I would like to bring your, uh, your question onto the screen, which is how do you back up your drawings? Um, I don't really, <laughs> so I'm kind of living dangerously. I just keep them in my iPad, and if I had, um, I think if I was a little brighter, uh, and if I had it together a little more, I would save my drawings on a cloud immediately after I draw them, uh, but I haven't done that. So, um, yeah, I don't back them up. And Margaret, it's Jonathan. Thank you, Dana, for giving the answer. Thank you, thank you. So Jonathan uh, Kanema is our muse today. Look at this gorgeous profile that we're gonna deal with. So as I said, I'm going to have my muse on the left and I am going to draw on the right side of the screen. Those of you who are left-handed, and I know for a fact that some of you are, you can do the opposite, which means you can open Procreate first and then when you open your photos that drags on the, on the right. So feel free to use Procreate. I see that uh, Jenny, let me try to grab your, your comment. Jenny will be using Procreate 2. Perfect. 
Um, so guys, I really hope uh, you can do this. And again, um, you don't have to, you can definitely use uh, anything. Oh, by the way, Christine, you're bringing up the issue of something that I should also probably bring up. A screen protector. Um, what I have on my screen, and the reason why there is no glare, is because I, I do use, let me see where I keep it, uh, there it is, okay. I use what we call Super Shields, this is a brand, I would like you to take a look at this quickly. Uh, Super Shields, it's a screen protector, it's not called paper-like, but really it does the same job, which is make your screen uh, much less bright and uh, really presents, uh, prevents, uh, it prevents, sorry, I was reading a, a message from, from Sketchy on the side, um, prevents also a lot of the, the finger uh, fingerprints because that really is annoying. You're constantly wiping the screen. Since I've been using uh, Super Shields, and this is uh, for the 12.9, they come in packs of three. It's not easy to put on, but once you get the hang of it a little bit, it really is great. And yes, Christine, it does have a little bit of grab uh, underneath the tip of the... Um, uh, of the Apple Pencil, and that really is a pleasant feel when, when you draw on the iPad. Okay, so let's see. Oh my goodness, more people just... Da, 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 da. Uh, wait, Chris, what are you telling us about how to backup? That's really interesting. So if you turn on iCloud backup in settings, your drawings should be backed up. Oh, but you mean once we save them in photos, right? Because that's what I do. If I save them in photos, then they automatically go into my iCloud backups. That's what I assume you mean, Chris, right? Yes, right. So Jenny, I think we're on the same, on the same page, backing up through uh, photos. That's what I do. It's true. So I guess I, I am backing them up. Okay, so I'm going to remove Jonathan from the screen and just have him... Okay, let me see if I can... My iPad keeps falling asleep. Of course, it's... It's asking me to enter my passcode again. All right, here we go. Are you guys ready to start? So first, did you notice that our muse is not against, against a white background? So I think I am actually answering this question right away. Will you be using tone paper? Okay. I would suggest that you use tone paper uh, because you're going to have fun adding some of the white highlights. So what I'm going to do in uh, Procreate, I'm going to go to uh, the layers and go to the background uh, color. Can you see where I am, everybody? And in the background color, um, let me see. I am going to use, let me see if a warm gray, oh, that's a little dark. So I'm going to bring this and add a little more light. I want this a little less yellow, but okay. Mm. How about we settle for something like this? It's warmer than the original photo, but it is not, um, it's not white. And I think that matters because take a look at Jonathan, right? There are going to be some very um, subtle white highlights going on here on his cheek, but most of all in his teeth here they are much brighter than the gray background, okay? So, um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Eddie, for the tip in order to make the, the reference photo uh, bigger. Thank you, okay. All right, so, are you ready? Let's talk about brushes. I have a bunch of favorites that I've saved in my favorites. A lot of them come from this pack of brushes that I was telling you about that I will give you the link to. And I will also put the link in the Drawing with France uh, drawing group in Sketchy Art School. I have a huge preference these days for this brush called Elder Sketcherman. I absolutely love this brush. I find it very organic. But one that is original to uh, procreate is called Chalk. And this is one that I used to use a lot as well. Um, chalk is very close to that too. It, it will give you a tiny bit of a thinner uh, brush, 
but it's an amazing brush to, to go with. So guys, if you can find your chalk brush in Procreate, I would say let's go with that. But don't feel compelled to do this just because I'm going to use that. If you would rather use, let's say, a dry ink or um, any ink bleed, for instance, this is another one that I absolutely love, the ink bleed. If you want to have more of a pen feel for what we're going to do, you can also go with pencils. If you go with the 6B pencil, you know, that's one of my absolute favorites as well. 6B pencil is here. 6B compressed charcoal is a great start for drawings as well. So I'm going to show you how I start a drawing. Um, I am going to choose the Elder Sketcherman because I'm in love with it. Um, and what I do is I'm going to select it rather big. Let me, let me explain why. Okay, I'm at about 60, 67%, which is rather big. And I'm going to lower the, uh, the opacity of the brush so that it's really low. So that when you make your first um, stroke, you see it doesn't show as black. If I were to push the opacity all the way to 100%, then we have a black stroke. You see? All right. So let me see. Where is chalk? Is, uh, chalk is underneath. Do you know? It's under calligraphy, uh, Annie. So chalk is under calligraphy, my daughter tells me, because she's on Procreate as well. OK. All right, so um, I'm going to, again, lower the opacity of this thing a lot, a lot, because this is how I start a drawing. OK, are you ready? So I'm going to push this up a little bit so that you can still see Jonathan on my left. And um, this question here comes up. It's really interesting because uh, Dollar, this was not purchased. It came, chalk came with Procreate. But the one that I'm going to use did not. And I'm going to give you the link at the end for this amazing pack of brushes by somebody named Georg in Germany. He's just the, the brush master, if you, ask, if you want to ask me. OK, let me make this canvas just a little bigger so it fills the screen, okay. You know that you can snap the, the screen to, into place by just <laughs> squeezing two fingers. But okay, so um, Jonathan on the left, canvas on the right. I am going to now maybe lower the size and do a quick, let me just, let me just show you how I do it. So I do a quick and I don't really lift up my, my pencil, my, yeah, my Apple pencil. But what I do is a very rough um, start so that my, uh, my proportions are somewhat, you know, not thrown out the window from, from the start. You see what I'm doing? Just very loose, extremely loose um, uh, strokes at first. Okay? All right. <laughs> All right, so if we keep our proportions right, the, the ear is fairly small here, and it's located right about here. We're going to have a line here for the... cheek, top of the head. You see, as you go more and more... Now, I'm going to have to maybe come back and erase some of these lines here. That's okay, I'm not worried about that. Um, but roughly what I want to achieve here is where things are. You see where uh, the end of the last tooth here is very close. There should be a line here if you were to, to look at it that way, where the ear stops. So staying very sketchy. And what I like doing is using the same brush when I use uh, the eraser. Um, use the same brush for the eraser as you do for what you're drawing so that when you're ready to come back and erase a few things, which is the case here, the op opacity is, is at a 100%. Okay, again, don't worry about getting it right the first time around. What we're establishing here is our proportions. So not too worried. The teeth will end here, something like this. The mouth 
opens really wide, way underneath, and I'm going to establish that it goes this way, right? Keeping track of my proportions. I might even go lower with uh, underneath Jonathan's head here, neck. I'm still in very low opacity in my brush because I want things to be very light, but broad. Okay, staying extremely loose here, but establishing where the limits of, uh, of this drawings are good, of this drawing are going to be. So let me see if I'm getting it right. Somewhere here. Yeah, something like this. Just now, as it is, I've established the proportions of my drawing, and I don't think I'm going to go and change things uh, beyond that. I'm, like, I'm not going to decide, oh my gosh, I did this too big, I did this too small. They're basically uh, established now. And the eye is going to be somewhere here. The eye is very much in the dark. Did you notice? We barely see Jonathan's eye. Okay. Uh, the neck seems to be... Uh, let me see. There's this line here. The neck is a little bit behind it. So maybe this line should be here. We'll figure this out. Okay. And there goes Jonathan's neck. Okay, so now um, I'm going to be ready to push the opacity of uh, my brush to 100% because you see I was at 28%. Now I'm going to push it to 100% so that the next line that I make on this drawing is going to be dark and thick. But I'm going to reduce the size of my brush a little bit. And now I'm going to go where I see the most dark on Jonathan's head. And do you agree that the darkest areas are here and here? So this is where I feel more confident. And even though we cannot smear on an iPad, I've, I've got this right-handed reflex of starting something on the, on the west side and continuing to the east. It's just one of those things. Now, things are going to lo look very smooth at first, but we are going to make hair appear as we go. But don't, don't worry, we'll get back to that a little later. Okay, so now I'm feeling a little more confident filling this in with dark, dark strokes, okay? All right, now I'm going to lower the opacity again in order to fill where the hair is, the hairline. Jonathan's hair is so short that it's very subtle where the hairline stops, okay? So I might have to go back a little later with my um, eraser to make this appear a little more uh, subtle, okay? Um, uh, Eddie, you have a good point. You can smudge. I never do. I never, never, ever smudge. Ever. I don't with my fingers, and I certainly don't on the iPad either. This is not a habit of mine. Um, I don't find it helpful. I find that it um, muds, you know, it makes things look muddy and murky, and I really don't like that effect. Um, so I avoid uh, smudging as much as possible. Uh, feel free to do so if you if you like the effect. This is obviously a personal preference, but uh, I really don't like the smudge effect at all. I stay away from it. All right, so uh, going into the shapes of Jonathan's uh, face. Okay. Don't worry, things are going to look sketchy for a while. That's that's all right. Um, again, lowering the opacity, I am now going to fill in um, a lot of darker values on Jonathan's face, but I will come back and remove some of them because that's that's the beauty of playing with uh, with digital is that we can do that. We don't have really that luxury. With graphite, that's fine. Okay, so you see I'm establishing areas of, of darker values here, fine. Now pushing my uh, opacity yet again 
and making this just a little thinner can fill in a lot of information. I hope that you can see this well on the um, on the iPad and that it's not too too bright. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm making this a little. See, I I will keep playing with the width of this of this brush constantly. Because when I get into uh, finer details, I will definitely want this brush to be thinner. You see what I'm doing right now, right? But as I move into the broader strokes, needless to say, I'm going to need the brush to be thicker. So it's just one of those things. Okay. So here we go. Now I'm making it a little bigger feeling a little bolder because my proportions are established so it's fine okay <laughs> it's interesting I am not a, uh, a messy quote-unquote artist by any any stretch of the imagination I, I don't like dirty in my hands it's it's horrible to I don't like it. So smudging for me is a big no-no. Plus I establish uh, the quote-unquote non-smudging with cross-hatching. That's how I've always proceeded. It's funny. I do not like getting the surface too dirty. Okay, so how are we doing? Are you guys using chalk? Is it working out okay for you? Yeah, playing with the width of the chalk so that you can get different uh, different effects. And what's interesting about any brush is that if you touch slightly uh, the screen, because it is uh, pressure sensitive, oops, for some reason it changed the color, it's pressure sensitive, so if you hardly touch, even if you're in a broad stroke, it will give you a fine line, and that's really cool. I have drawn this portrait before, but I did it with chalk. I'll show you the results of uh, the way I did it before. It's different. Okay, um, I can even go into the detail of the hair on the, on the side here by making my brush a lot thinner and adding, you know, just the idea of that little bit of hair here, the texture, you know, that's going to make it look a little more realistic. Not a lot, just a little bit to suggest that there is hair. See, with just a thinner brush, I'm just exaggerated here a little bit, there we go adding the details of Jonathan's hair. I'm not cleaning up my lines yet, I'm not worried about that. However, where the line of his uh, forehead is, you know, a clean line, I feel compelled to, to clean that up so that there is no fuzz. Where it shouldn't be, really. Mm -hmm. Clean up a little bit here, okay? Let me see if I can add a little bit of brightness without it being too bright for you guys, okay? I'm glad that you guys are enjoying this. Yes, I'm enjoying it. I am not used to using my iPad flat on the table like this. Uh, I would say 100% of the time that I use my iPad, I use it on my lap, so it's up. And of course, the... Um, it helps with the perspective, the distortion. It's better. Okay. Sorry, I need tissue again. Okay. And yes, this, this whole video, you can rewatch it later. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on. Let's, let's, uh, you know, I, go, I jump from one thing to the next because I talk. Um, 
things done. Okay. <clears throat> now you're probably wondering how we're going to um, render the hair here. We are going to, by coming back a little bit with a very low opacity um, eraser, which is going to help us do things like this. So take a look. I'm going to select the eraser. I'm going to make it mm, maybe brush size 13% lower the opacity to about 20 something percent and then with a little bit of cross hatching here and there to suggest skin you barely see it but that's the point the point is that it's very subtle and as you cross hatch and cross hatch it's going to make texture of hair appear don't worry about the, the direction of your cross hatching. Really, it doesn't matter. In fact, it should go in all kinds of directions, you see. And that by itself is going to, to establish a little bit of, um, of light in the hair. You see what I just did? And I'm going to do it even more here. This is what I love about drawing with Procreate, is that you can bring more light in as you go, and, and it's so soothing, too. Because as you bring the light, you make the, uh, you make the volume appear as well, which is so neat. So you see, they're not in any particular... Um, order it doesn't make much sense no rhyme or reason here but just to convey less hair and more skin okay i'm gonna make this even thinner up the opacity a little bit so that it's even wider okay you see what i'm doing and now you have like little marks yeah And we will, we will tweak things here in this area, okay? We are far from being done um, here. Okay, back to uh, my brush. I like it, 45% you know, thickness. Opacity, mm, let's see, what am I, what am I going to do next? Opacity, 100%, because I actually like to work here a little bit. Uh, the chin is pretty clearly, oh, let me lower the size of the brush. So now my brush is at 18%, but keep in mind that this Elder Sketcherman brush is a very wide one, so it, it needs to be really lowered to get uh, even a fairly thick brush, okay? Thank you, Jimmy, I will speak up. Thank you. Um, yes, so Pam, your question about my Procreate class very much my first of all let me establish this for everybody if you if you don't know this procreate class that i teach i treat procreate very much like a piece of paper i know that procreate is an amazing tool with so many possibilities right i know i know um however i keep it very much close to the experience of uh paper it's it is what I love the most about it is that I don't use all the bells and whistles and I still treat it like a very easy uh, tool and that keeps me from getting lost and from letting too much of the the effect do the job I still like the very analog feel of, of procreate that way so frankly, it's, um, it's, it's the best for me. I keep Procreate very simple, very basic. You will notice, for instance, that right now we're working in one layer. I, maybe the most layers that I've ever used in a drawing was two. <laughs> um, so I obviously, you know, just keep, keep things very, very simple. Okay. 
All right, all right. So let's see. Um, okay. So, oh yeah, thank you. So you have you have the Procreate, uh, Sarmed, you have the Procreate course, I'm glad. So get in and see what you can do with it. It's, uh, it's a fun class and it's definitely a beginner's uh, course. It shows you a lot of the beginning stuff. Okay, let me lower the opacity so I can go back and do things more like a pencil. <laughs> This is acting almost like a piece of, of graphite, you know, a big stick of graphite. Going back here, there's a lot of dark here happening. And now I'm going to bring in the dark where I see it. Okay. It's funny, I'm moving a lot slower than if I if I was drawing by myself. But that's I guess that's normal when when I have to look at comments and, and talk. Okay, uh, can one use an older iPad, not pro for the class? Cindy, absolutely. As long as you have access to Procreate, you can, uh, you can do uh, any, any Procreate class. So it doesn't have to be the iPad Pro. The beautiful thing, Cindy, about the iPad, the iPad Pro, I believe, is the capacity to split the screen, which I don't think all iPads have. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay, my daughter tells me that her... Um... Okay, okay, so my daughter tells me that her iPad also splits the screen. So. Okay. All right. Oh, so Marcel, you bought a refurbished 2017. Okay, that's the one I used to have. I bought mine in 2016, um, and I loved it. I absolutely loved that, that iPad. Okay, so continuing with lower opacity... Um, but still pretty opaque. You see what I'm doing? I'm filling in information here at the bottom of Jonathan's face. Let's see if I'm still getting it right. Looks like it. Lowering the width, constantly, you know, playing around between the width and the opacity. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Oh, okay, here we go. I have a very thin... Oh, I see. Oh, first, first undo of the, the time. It's 37 minutes in, and I just tapped um, two fingers to do an undo. Um, it's not a feature that I use a lot. I love it, though. I love having the luxury to do a two-finger tap to just remove something I did. Uh, let me see. What do I want here? Something thin, but somewhat dark. So push the opacity, but I lower the width. Because here I'm doing hair. You see the little bit of hair at the, at the end of Jonathan's chin? Now I'm going to push the opacity and continue with this area here. Still following my initial uh, marks, okay, because they, they helped me establish where things were. It's really behaving like, um, gosh, this is what I love so much about this brush. It's really behaving uh, like a graphite pencil. It's just the best feeling. Absolutely love that. Okay, um, I'm going to clean up, you know, the edges. So I go back and forth between eraser and brush. And sometimes the eraser allows you to do things with hair, things like that, okay? All right, let me try not to lose track of my comments. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marcel, you, oh my gosh, you crack me up. You double tap on your paper when you draw on traditional uh, media. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Oh, it's funny, these things. Or have, have you ever pinched in and out on a piece of paper because you want it to look closer? I've done it. I'm, uh, you know, guilty as charged. Yep, exactly. My daughter says she's done the same too. Okay. What are you drawing, Nora? 
Oh, nice. Okay, maybe towards the end of the drawing, maybe when we talk about what we've done, I'd like to see what you've done too, okay? That would be good. It's so windy here, my chimes are just going crazy outside. Okay, let me uh, reestablish this a little better. I'm not a big fan of how I did his lower lip. Okay, here we go. All right. Did you notice that the teeth have not yet been addressed? This is probably going to be the last uh, thing I do. Okay. Okay. And still uh, bringing in the darker values with uh, less opacity, which gives me more flexibility. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the Adam's apple. I'm going to push the opacity now, push the width of the brush to save time. Okay, now I've got all the opacity in the world. And by barely touching uh, the surface of the iPad, just like any graphite, I managed to, to give texture, you see, by, by very, very lightly touching the surface of the iPad. And that's another thing that Procreate is very good at. It's the pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil and Procreate. These two things are just meant to go together. It's just amazing. Okay. Coming back here and adding a little bit of light behind Jonathan's ear because I see it. So I want it to show. Okay. Very thin brush here for my... Uh... So, um, Sahmed, you were asking if I was still using the chalk. I'm using this thing called uh, the Elder Sketcherman, which is very close to the chalk in, in texture. It's very much the same thing. I have not changed brush. And by the way, maybe I should bring up the fact that I very rarely, um, very rarely change brushes uh, within the same drawing. Okay, I just realized that I made the back of his head a little close. So now I'm going to make this a little wider because his neck was just a tiny bit uh, small. I'm just adding here, not subtracting. Okay. You know by now, if you've followed uh, my drawings, you know how much of a, of a preference I have for uh, darker complexioned uh, skins. They are so much more fun to draw because they give us a lot of contrast. Um, they give us a lot to, uh, to hang on to, you know, when we draw. And I find that to be far more interesting when you learn, when you learn to draw or extremely high contrast photos of uh, lighter complexioned people, that, that works too. Uh, but a, a photo like this really gives us so many opportunities. I love it. Love it. Uh, bringing back a little bit of eraser here, but very, very lightly and then coming back, okay? Is everybody doing all right? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I like the, the split screen. We can see him pretty well on the side. Right? Um, the beauty about drawing an ear is that you can make it a little bit approximate and it still looks like an ear, so don't don't sweat it. You know, even if your proportions are not perfect, which I'm, I'm noticing in my case here, they are not. So, okay. So this little area right here will be a good candidate for uh, uh, white, because we're going to bring in white for Jonathan's teeth in a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, here's, here's where I'm going to lower the opacity so that I have a little more flexibility. Okay, but I still have a fairly wide brush. And now I'm bringing in the darker values. Are you ready? Okay, so let's see. Uh, I always end up having a runny nose when I draw, guys. Okay. Let me see if this is what I meant. So his eye, and then there seems to be a an eyebrow here, right? Somewhere here. Which gives us permission now to go a little darker at the corner, right there. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to ask you guys a, a favor, which is to keep the language uh, in check because we have. Um, a younger audience that joins us every week, so try not to use the F word, okay? That would be really uh, considerate of our younger audience, and of us too, personally. I, I really don't want to see profanity in, uh, in the comments of my, of my videos. Thank you in advance for your understanding, okay? So now playing with the, uh, the eraser to to bring back a little more light. Okay. Coming back to the brush. Okay, let me up the, the brightness a little bit here, okay? Just for, uh, for me, even if it's a little brighter on your end, I hope it's okay that you, uh, that you see things a little brighter because it allows me to stay, um, true to the values of the original photo. Okay. Okay. All right, the eye is not easy to see, but it's there. It is there. There's a, a scream in that photo. Some some people might argue that it's an angry photo, maybe, but I, I really like the energy, uh, which really brings a lot of tension to, uh, to Jonathan's face, and I absolutely love trying to represent this in a drawing. Okay, I left this very light, but now it's time to, to bring in the details of the eye. Remember that there's not a whole lot to play with here. For the eye, but there is some. Okay. You know what I do a lot personally is um, I tend to uh, turn my iPad completely. This is a sketchbook habit. Uh, but really, you can just turn the, the canvas around, so obviously it's it's a smarter move to do it this way. You know, turning it around with two fingers all the time, depending on how comfortable you want to be. I do that a lot, <clears throat> as you know. So now bringing back the little bit of eraser for the highlights. You see what I'm doing here? Highlight on the nose. Okay, highlight here as well, a little bit. I'm juggling back and forth between the brush and the eraser. Okay.
I still have not used a white brush to bring in those white uh, highlights, but I will in a few minutes. I'm in no rush, I just want things to look really natural right now. Um, let me see if I can push this. To make this little, you know, the uh, underneath the nostril here, which is showing. I like that little detail. This is the kind of little detail I live for. <laughs> Uh, okay, Sarmed, you are asking me what kind of stand do I use? Uh, so that again, if you um, uh, if you come to a Drawing with Friends uh, group on Sketchy Art School, I can uh, I can give you a link to what kind of uh, document camera this is. It's a really great little little camera. It's about two two hundred dollars, uh, something like this. For a camera like this. Um, really enjoy using that. Okay, uh, make this a little wider, still keeping the opacity low so that I have flexibility. Okay. And now, as, as you know, I don't like smudging, but I really use a very light pressure on my Apple Pencil to convey the sketchiness of all this. And now coming back with uh, the eraser, bringing in a little bit of hatching, very light, into the areas where I think maybe I've overdone it. You can barely see the impact of that. Because it's so light. Let me push the... Uh, there we go, it's a little better. I don't like these thick lines either. I don't think they're right. So two things I will bring in uh, today. I will um, give you a link to the brushes of Georg, a German artist who makes amazing brushes. And if you do want to spend $15 on brushes, go for it. I know I, I, I absolutely think that's, uh, that's worth it. Um, and um, I will also give you a link to this uh, document camera for, you, for those of you who are interested. Okay. Ta-da-da! You notice I have not even addressed his teeth yet. Not even close. Not even close. There is a line here in his neck which is really strong. It's the line that goes this way. I want to make that line and then blur it into uh, the texture of his skin. You see what I'm doing? And here I'll bring in a little more, a um, little more eraser. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness! I hope <clears throat> I'm not missing out on too many comments. Um, yeah, Dana, I'm I'm very much attached to the idea of drawing with one tool because it keeps things. Um, not overwhelming at first, because I know that when you first get Procreate, you, you feel compelled to to play around with all the tools, and that's great. Um, but that's a double-edged sword because uh, you get lost, you know what I mean? And, and I haven't gotten to the point where I've explored even 20% of the potential of Procreate in that respect, meaning... I like keeping things very close to the experience of analog 
so that I don't get overwhelmed, so that procreate doesn't become this this monster, this almost this enemy that I don't want to touch again. You know, I I want to feel uh, close to it. I want to feel like it's there to help me and not, uh, you know, not this overwhelming thing that's beyond my reach. So yeah, uh, Dana, I keep things super simple. Okay. Yeah, one uh, one tool and technique at a time. At a time. Okay. And yes, I'm using the uh, the Apple Pencil. All right, guys. So you see, his face is um, is slowly coming into focus. And now I need to address um, Jonathan's teeth. What do you say? Okay. So we've got the upper lip, which is going to go like this. There's a little bit of a mess of construction lines that I feel the need to take take away here with my eraser. Just to be a little cleaner here on the around the nose. Okay, so um, let's see what I can do to bring these these teeth without it looking too monstrous. So let's see. It looks as though teeth are gonna go like that. And then underneath. Okay, remember that when you draw teeth, you don't want to draw all the lines between the teeth because then they look uh, they look insane. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here, Andy, because you just bought an iPad, right? Hi. Hi, Andy. So Andy just got an iPad, what, three, four days ago, perhaps? I'm not sure, but I saw that on Instagram, and I was so happy for you because you were uh, totally in um, in exploration mode, right? And Kate, I'm really happy that you don't feel um, as though you're, I mean, it, it's really giving yourself permission, and I think you're absolutely right about using only what you need. Um, why not, right? Uh, if, you, if you want to limit yourself, then limit yourself. In, in limiting ourselves, I think we allow ourselves to be very creative. Okay, very thin here. This is going to be tricky, guys. It, there's there's a reason why I was keeping this for the end, right? Hey, hey, Lapin. How are we doing? Okay. Okay. A lot of police cars out there today. Okay, so guys, stay with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, Andy, I know you're in the exploration stage. That's great. So now I'm going to go and use the white, okay? And with the white, I'm not going to change my brush, meaning the, the, I'm not going to use a different type of brush, but the white is what I'm going to use um, for the teeth and for some of the highlights. Emily, you're here. I'm so happy that you're here. Hi putting my Procreate to good practice. That's great. And again, just use what you need with Procreate, you know? It, it, can get, uh, it can get daunting otherwise. Okay, so look, I am now gonna do basically spots for the teeth. What I, what I think these teeth are like, I'm, I'm now bringing them in, okay? Oh, I don't have enough opacity. My bad. Let me do this again. Ah, that's so much better. Okay, so I've got one here. Let's see. I've got another one here. Okay. And one going like this. And I hope... It's somewhat accurate. They are tricky. Okay, so you see now I've got... Oh, it's very hard for you to see. Let me lower the light on my iPad. I hope you can see it better. You see what I've just done? Okay. So this will allow you to make teeth like, you know, little pearls. 
But do not, no matter what you do, don't draw those lines in between the teeth. It's it's just not the right thing to do. They're, they're going to look horrible if you do that. Just draw them, and then I'll tell you what we're doing next. Okay, there's one right here. So you see, by lowering the... Um, uh, the brightness of my screen, now you, you can see the white of these teeth that, that is just coming through. Now, going back uh, to my other color, you guys know this little trick on Procreate, when you go between two colors, like right now I'm in white, long press, and it brings you to the one color that you were using before that. Long press again, brings you back to, you can toggle back and forth between two colors like this, it's a great, um, great tool. There we go, okay. So now I'm back to going in with black because I want to, okay, now we are, we are going into details. We are going into the details of Jonathan's gum. Okay, you see, a little bit here. And it's just gonna make the teeth look a little more realistic when you do this. You don't do the line per se, okay? You do maybe you suggest it here. You see what I'm doing here? But that's it. Lowering the opacity and bringing some shadow onto this tooth. Going back to white. And suggesting just a little bit of the tooth here. Going back to black. Okay, I don't have enough brightness to work with, so now I'm going to bring in a tiny bit more brightness so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, good, good, good. All right. A little bit of facial hair above the mouth here. Okay. All right, so now, now let's be, let's be, Careful because I want to bring in the dark behind those teeth. Let's see if I'm doing this right. Okay. Da, 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 da. It's wild how well defined his uh, his teeth are, especially in the back there, right? This is helping us actually a lot. Not a big fan of this line, but it's it's there. And then when you go darker right behind it, then suddenly you have like the 3D of uh, of the tooth coming in. There's another one here, and now I feel much more confident to do the shape of the teeth in the back. Okay, guys, you see what, what's going on here? Okay, let me correct some of this. Okay, let's see. So one here, one here. Roughly, okay. It may not be super accurate, but... Now we have... Um, okay, let me let me show you. I'm going to um, lower the brightness of my screen. There we go. Okay. Okay, guys, what do you say? You see how these teeth are very white uh, behind them, not. Just like that, we've brought in. Hold on, tell me what I did here. Let's see. One, two, three, blending in this way. Okay, uh, bringing back the brightness. <laughs> I'm kind of playing around here with the uh, the brightness of my screen, but that's because I need to see what I'm doing. But in order to, for you to see what I'm doing, sometimes I need to lower the brightness. Okay, there's a lot of shadows on teeth. You know that, right? So don't hesitate to, to come back and bring in a little bit of shadow so that it doesn't look crazy. 
crazy white oop too much let me undo this okay all right um white highlights let me go back to the white and bring in where the highlights i think where they go so i'm not going to push the opacity completely but a little bit of white here and there with a very light stroke just enough to make things pop a little bit see here okay it's a little bright for you so let's see if i lower again if i lower the brightness you will see it better right so you see what i just did i i'm bringing in now some highlights in white we can also bring a little bit here but let's not go crazy because the whitest thing that we have here is his teeth and that gives us um, how far we can go. We can't go brighter than that on his skin. It wouldn't be right. It would, it would look like he's got makeup on, you know what I mean? So we don't want to do that. But I just want to bring in a little bit of white highlights, okay? So, guys, if you want to take this cross-hatching class that I, that I teach at um, Sketchy, um, look, we have 40% off right now, any three classes that I teach. So whether you want to take uh, cross-hatching, uh, whether you want to take my portraits in Procreate, whether you want to take the um, 30 Faces 30 Days that we did earlier this year, all these are available to you if you want to grab three and... Um, you know, while we're all at home and sort of confined and willing to learn something new, then um, this is this is really the time to do it. Okay, just adding a little bit of highlight. I'm being very, very careful here, but I'm I'm trying to establish where those lighter spots are without making it a caricature. You know what I mean? like here as well, and oh my gosh, there's a spot right there in his ear, which is super bright, look at that, boom, there it is, and this spot here, I can make it just a little brighter, okay, oops, I just, see what I just did, oh my gosh, what am I doing, all right, let's undo this, oh, sometimes I can't, come on, okay, so, when I try to pinch in and out, this, this happens more often than I'm willing to admit. Um, okay. Okay, let's finish up now Jonathan's neck. Okay, here. This way. All right, and you know, we're almost, almost done. Okay, it's, we've been together for an hour and 10 minutes. I'm going to wrap things up, guys, and head over to Sketchy Art School, post our drawings. Keep in mind, for those of you who want to take any one of my classes, 40% off for three of them at a time. It's a, it's a crazy good deal you're saving a lot of money on three classes and it kind of forces you to uh, you know to keep that habit which sometimes you need to be forced into I mean I know that's that's the case for me doing this every week with you guys have has been um, has been great for my my discipline as well you know showing up at the page seeing you online I'm like okay we can do this you know it's such a good feeling such a good feeling Okay, I am going to stop. How about I stop here? Nora, you want to come over here and show us what you what you drew, perhaps? Mm -hmm. All right, come over here. I kept things a little blurry in this area. I'm kind of surprised, but okay. Guys, what do you say? I don't like how the line here is a little cartoony. Okay. All right, so um, here is what uh, my, da my daughter drew. Let me lower the, the brightness on this too. Can I lower the brightness? Mm -hmm. 
All right. Okay. So, um, okay. so glad you guys. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is probably a little better. This is my daughter's take on uh, Procreate today. Ta da! This is her little iPad mini. Um, she has Procreate as well with a different Apple Pencil, but still an Apple Pencil. I love the colors. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so here we go. Let's snap this into place. Um, remember that the resemblance may not be 100%, but what I was really going after was all the, you know, the volume, the shapes, the, the dark, the light, the contrast, the teeth. My gosh, the teeth were so much fun to draw, right? So we got it now, and uh, everybody... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, um, Marcel, you're right. I can turn off the thing where my fingers are registering. You're absolutely right. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so are you ready? Um, we are going to say goodbye. Um, I'm so glad that you guys were here. You know that I'm doing this with you, but I'm doing this also for me. Um, I'm really just so happy to be able to show up every week and have you guys to draw with. This is really just uh, such a gift. Um, I love it. So let me uh, make this just a little bigger. I'm putting Jonathan on the side here and making my drawing a little bigger. Um, let's go to Sketchy Art School. Like, let's post what we've got. Uh, those of you who drew on paper, I'd love to see what you did with this. Um, I know that it was so much fun to draw on Procreate. I love drawing on Procreate. I do it every day. So thank you for being here, everyone. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to say bye to everybody. I'm going to put this on Sketchy Art School in the Drawing with Friends group, which is free to access. And um, let me just come back on camera for a minute so I can say goodbye. Okay. Yay, Gunil, you were here. This is great. And uh, thank you for being here, everybody. Let's say goodbye. Let's say au revoir. Thank you for being here. I'm going to be here again next week. That's going to be April the 18th. Somewhere in between there, there's going to be my birthday. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're older. Um, but again, the person to really congratulate for that is, uh, is our mom, right? They're the ones who did the job. Okay, everyone, have a great week. I'll see you in seven days next Saturday, same time, almost the same place, you know, a new YouTube, but, you know, same idea. We're going to draw together, and I hope you guys have a great week, and I hope you're dealing with this fairly well. Stay healthy, and I'll see you soon, okay? All right, everyone, I'm going to sign off now. Thank you for being here. Bye.